Derivation. A single most important Nix concept is a set of instructions that describe the build process of a package. These instructions are used to create all of your system packages in a declarative and reproducible way. We've already looked at the most basic derivations in the NixOS theming video, but today we'll have a closer look at how to work with them. Let's begin by making the most basic derivation for a simple C++ Hello World program. I'll show you how to build it both with flakes and without, but for now, let's assume that we have this project directory and it contains src with our hello world.cpp. Obviously, to build this program regular Linux way, we would have to cd into it and run this command. But to explain this to Nix, let's make use of the default.nix file, which will return an output of a make derivation function. Make derivation is located in stdenv, so we have to get that from somewhere. We could make a packages variable at the top with let and in syntax and import our system's Nix packages. That is cool, but an even cooler solution would be turning this file into a function that takes a set with packages and in case packages are not provided, use it the system ones. This way we can build a package with Nix build or include it in some other Nix expressions, like a flake for example. By creating a regular flake.nix file and importing it in the default systems package key of our outputs. You could also skip the default.nix file altogether and define the function here. This flake package can now be built with a nix build command without a dash. Anyway, our make derivation function takes a set with some required keys, such as name of our package, which is hello world in our case, src, which is the source for the package, we'll just put dot slash src here because we want to use the entire src directory. And there are also a bunch of optional keys, some of which we are gonna take a look at. The derivation has multiple phases, which are essentially just bash scripts that it runs to unpack, build or install the package. Let's define the build phase for this package, it assumes that we are already in the src directory, so all we have to do is run g++ command to get a compiled binary. But that's of course not enough. We want to add an install phase to tell Nix that we want user to be able to execute the binary. All NixOS packages store their executable binaries in the out slash bin directory. So we first make sure that it exists by running mkdir p $out slash bin. Whoa, whoa. What is $out? I hear you ask. It is a regular bash variable exposed to us by Nix. It is going to be turned into a final path to our package when we build it. So mkdir p out slash bin essentially becomes this very long Nix store path. We are still in the source directory, so we can now use cp command to copy our hello world binary into out slash bin. However, to be explicit, we could also write it like this. The src variable expands into path to our src directory once it gets copied into the Nix store to be built. We can now run the Nix build command to build our package and symlink it into the current directory from the Nix store. Here is the project structure after build. If you don't specify a build phase, Nix will attempt to use a make file from the source directory. So let's try to remove it create this simple make file and rebuild the package. Once again, everything will work. Of course, you probably won't just be making derivations for C++ programs without any libraries. So to add runtime dependencies to our derivation, we use the build inputs key. Let's modify our C++ program to use the ncurses library and add it to our derivation. We will also modify the build command and boom, the derivation is working as expected. But let's say, for example, that we wanted to package a C++ program that invokes a cowsay command. For this to work, the cowsay binary needs to be available in the path, just as if it was installed on the user's machine. To achieve this, we can use the make wrapper package, which provides a wrap program program that lets us put other binaries inside bash scripts with specific environment variables. We could put it in build inputs, but a better place for it would be native build inputs. Packages defined here will only be available in your phases and not at runtime. Now we can add a postfix subphase and using this command, define a path variable that will only be set for the hello world binary. But it doesn't even have to be called a postfix subphase, because we can define our own list of phase names, making it a bit clearer, especially if you are just learning to use derivations. The packages.lib.make bin path will expand into a regular Linux path variable, containing all the packages provided to it. So in our case, only cowsay. Let's now build our package and check it out. The wrap program command from the last phase has moved our binary into dot hello world slash wrapped. And hello world is now a bash command that wraps it, containing cowsay in the path. If we run it, 
cow save will be executed just as expected, even though it's not present in our user's environment. Of course, depending on the language, the build process and runtime dependencies can be drastically different. If you are using Golang or Rust, you should check out the build and runtime dependencies on NixWiki, or use language-specific packaging functions like build Rust package. Oh yeah, how am I checking out BAT's derivation Nix file? You can use a Nix edit command followed by a Nix packages sharp package name, or just use search.nixos.org to check the Nix files of packages in Nix packages. But beware, because those are already part of Nix packages, they don't follow the structure shown in this tutorial, but rather import everything separately. Even then, you can still learn from them, and this is probably the best way to do it. Just find a program written in your favorite language and take inspiration from it. There is so much more to Nix derivations, but I hope that this video gave you enough basic knowledge to experiment more on your own and learn from it. As always, don't forget to check out our Discord server, and thank you so much for watching, liking and subscribing. I hope to see you in the next one.